One of the moves that people have asked a lot for a description of is power loops. Uh, that's one thing that people call it. It's where you basically do a loop instead of a flip, kind of like a fixed wing, but with a multi-rotor. This is not a complicated move to do, but it's a subtle move to get right. The good news is that it's kind of a hard move to get wrong. If you screw it up, you kind of just flip out of it and keep going. So you shouldn't have trouble learning to do this as long as you don't just fly into the ground without noticing that the ground is coming right at you, okay? So if you haven't got some experience with throttle off falls, in other words, if you haven't got some experience figuring out about how long you can stay in the air without hitting the ground, without seeing the ground, then maybe you should get a little more, more practice on that. Spend some time upside down with the throttle zeroed and, and falling and then not crashing into the ground, knowing, well, like, like I haven't finished the move yet, but I kind of think I might need to end it abruptly because I'm about to hit the ground, even though I can't see the ground. If you don't feel like you have a good instinct for that, then maybe put this one off for another day or eh, just get a lot of altitude and go for it, you know? Eh, what are you going to do? Uh, so anyway, let's talk about power loops. I want you to think of the power loop as if you're going through like a, a clock. You're going through a full circle. So you're going to start at 6 o'clock. You're going to climb up through 9 o'clock, 10, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And then at some point in there, your motors are going to be inverted and you're going to need to cut the throttle and then you just drift through the rest of the move. Uh, one, two, three, four o'clock. And then around five o'clock, four or five o'clock, you'll raise the throttle again to arrest the move. Now, one of the things that's really important as, you, as you're doing this is that you have to keep the throttle up through 10 and 11 o'clock and even 12 o'clock because the copter needs to be pitched backwards to give yourself that backwards momentum to carry you over the move. If you own, if you cut the throttle around like nine o'clock, then the motors will be pulling you straight up and you'll go up, you'll flip over and you'll do kind of a teardrop move. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a nice move too, but it's not a power loop. So let's start with an exercise you can do to get you familiar with how the copter is moving when it's entering the power loop. And what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to throttle up pitch back and try and find the moment where the copter is moving straight up. At that point, cut the throttle and flip the copter 180 degrees downwards so that you're looking straight at the ground and see if you're moving forward, backward, or straight up and down. So here's what that would look like. Now I'm gonna play this one again for you and if you watch it, you should notice that I'm slightly drifting forward right there I'm slightly drifting forward as I look down. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Throttle up, pitch back, maintaining the same pitch back, chop the throttle, pitch forward, look down, and you can see that I'm drifting slightly forward. So that one was close, but, but I kind of want to find that moment where I'm going straight up and down. I can do that by looking at the clouds or the trees or whatever, just by, by intuition, but try and find that moment. Here's another one. Let's see how I did. Well, that one looked pretty good, although I didn't flip over quite as sharply, so I might have had some time for the air to slow me down, but it looked like I was pretty much moving straight up and down when I arrested that one. If you're paying attention, you'll notice that I am stopping my pitchback movement approximately when I'm looking directly up at the sky. But don't assume that that means that that's where you should be stopping or, or that that's guaranteed that you won't be moving forward or backward. I have 45 degrees of camera up tilt. So when my camera is looking straight up at the sky, my copter is at 45 degrees. The actual time to chop the throttle depends on how long I am at that attitude and how much throttle I'm giving and, and many other factors. What I'm actually doing, and it's not like this is some big secret, I just find that it works for me, is I'm looking at the clouds. And although the clouds are very far away, if you're watching them, you can kind of tell that moment where you start drifting backwards instead of drifting forwards relative to them. Obviously, if the clouds are moving, you're boned, right? But that's just what I happen to be doing at this time. And I could look carefully for that moment where the copter was dead stopped and then flip it over.
All right, well, the next thing you're going to do is instead of flipping forward, you're going to keep the throttle up, you're going to keep pitching backward, and you're going to flip over. Now, I'm going to show you an example of what happens if you just flip over immediately without keeping the throttle up and without getting that backwards momentum. So in other words, I'm going to show you an example of what happens if you raise the copter through 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock where you're pushing more or less straight up and then you cut the throttle and flip over without continuing to thrust through 10, 11, 12 o'clock to give you the backwards momentum that makes a circle out of it instead of a kind of a, a, a loop, a loopy teardrop shape. If you watch that one again at half speed, I want you to notice this moment right here. And notice that the copter is not drifting backwards to make a loop out of this move. It's kind of falling straight down. Watch it again, and I'm not going to freeze it this time. But right at this moment, look what the copter's doing. It is not flying backwards to make a loop, but it's falling straight down. You can also see where this move went wrong if you look where I enter the move. And you can kind of see I just kind of go up and flip over and fall down and then I just kind of flip over to get out of it. So what, what happened there is that I did not keep the throttle up long enough and I get that backward momentum that would make a loop. I, I chopped the throttle too soon and, and then I just flipped over. So there's a couple things we can take from this. One of them is that if this move ever goes wrong, the safest thing you can do is just flip back over. Just continue the move, flip over, and fly out of it. You'll be fine. You've been doing backflips for a long time. And the other is that you need to keep the throttle up longer as you enter the move to make a complete circle. And the more up tilt you have, the longer you need to keep it up. The reason for that is that the more up tilt you have, the less tilted your copter is relative to what you're seeing in the camera's view. So if you have a lot of up tilt when the camera's looking straight up, you may only be at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the loop, right? You need to keep the motors going through at least 12 o'clock. If you don't have a lot of up tilt, then at the moment that you're looking straight up, you may be at 11.30 or 12 o'clock in the loop and it's time to cut your motors. This next one is a little bit of a better example. It's more loopy. I keep the throttle up uh, long enough. I end it a little abruptly. I pitch out of it a little abruptly though. Uh, ideally, your pitch stick will be at the same position through the whole move, and that will make a smooth uh, circle. Uh, in this case, you can see toward the end of the move, I pitch back a little extra and end the move a little abruptly, putting sort of a fish hook on the end that isn't as nice and smooth as it might be. I also ended pretty abruptly, still getting the feel for this copter and, and the way these work, but you just see in a bunch of examples of different ways to do it. In that one, there was some jerkiness in the pitch stick that doesn't look the best. Ideally, again, you want to keep the pitch stick uh, smooth and in the same position throughout the whole move. I just didn't like the way that one was going, so I aborted it by flipping out of it. Now it's starting to come together. I am getting a lot of altitude here, and I might do better to pitch back harder to make a sharper circle with less altitude gain. Oh, there you go. That was a nice smooth one. Let's watch that one again. You'll notice I'm consistently exiting these loops at a higher altitude than I enter them, and that's because I am a wuss, okay? 
You should ideally exit these loops at the same altitude that you enter them. Uh, I'm exiting them early because I'm a chicken. This one is a really nice one. I really like how smoothly that one ended. Just very smooth throughout the whole move. I feel like that's the best of the bunch. Another thing you can do to help you practice this move is to do the move next to a tall obstacle like these trees. So you, you fly parallel to the obstacle and then you do the move while looking at the obstacle out the side of your camera. And that helps you assess how loopy your loop is or whether it's more of a teardrop or just what's going on with a frame of reference that you don't have if you're just staring at the sky. Don't worry that you're going to fly into the obstacle. As long as you enter the move flying parallel to the obstacle, and as long as you pitch back without rolling to the side or yawing to the side, you'll just do the loop right next to the obstacle. And in fact, if you get really good at this, it can look super awesome. So here's a kind of a rough example of that. But this is that's the kind of thing I was practicing when I made the video, uh, Gravity is No Impediment. And you can see me do a lot of sort of loopy stuff like that around the trees uh, in that video. So if you watch that one again, you'll see you can see these trees out the right side of the camera pretty much through the whole move. Alrighty, well, I hope that's helped you get some perspective on how to do power loops. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And uh, as, you can watch me do my awesome up-tilt landing technique. Yeah. And as always, happy flying.